So in this section, we're going to start out by talking about a function and what function means in mathematical sense. So in mathematics, a function is used to represent dependence of one quantity upon another. So as an example, you could think about um, maybe your height as a function of your age, your height depends on your age. So the age that you are, um, you have a, a height, uh, maybe you take your height every year on your birthday or something like that. So your, your height could depend on your age or, um, or maybe your um, gas uh, bill depends on the number of gallons of gas you bought something like that. So you have some numerical quantity that depends on another numerical quantity. So we really will focus in in, in this course on, on numerical quantities depending on other numerical quantities. Um, so here's a, a definition. A function is a rule that takes a certain number as an input and assigns to each input a definite output. Um, so the set of all input numbers is called the domain. The domain is the set of inputs, and the set of all outputs is called the range. So, um, so for instance here, my height depends on my age, so the set of all inputs will be your age, and then the output is the, the heights. So the set of all ages is the domain. And the set of all heights is your range. So the minimum height might be the height that you were when you were born, and the maximum height would be the tallest height that you ever um, achieved in your lifetime, something like that. So, um, so the age, uh, the domain is the set of all the inputs, and the range is the set of all of the out possible outputs. Um, okay, and so a non-example of a function is, um, well, so is when you have an input and that input doesn't have um, a definite output. So it might have multiple outputs or, or something like that. So here's a non-example. Let's say you input a, a name and then the output is maybe your social security number or something like that. So it's possible maybe that there could be one person. Let's say we input the name John Smith, and then the output, you could have multiple social security numbers associated with that name. So this is an example of something that is not a function. Because the input does not have a definite output, so it needs to have one output that goes with each input. You can't have multiple outputs that go with one input. So that would be an example that, of something that is not a function. So there are four ways that we are going to represent uh, functions. And so one of those ways is analytically with a formula. So it's possible that some functions might have a formula, like you may have seen in your classes, like f of x equals x squared. That's an example of a formula uh, or something that you can do, and you can input an x value and you output the square of that number. Um, so that's an example of something that has a formula to determine the output, but not every function has to have a formula.
Um, another way you can represent a function is with a table. And so here's an example of a table that we're going to look at in a little bit. Um, but that is a table, and that, that table that gives the daily temperature, um, it's not going to have a formula that goes with it. So not every function has a formula. Um, but here is a, an example of a, of a table. Um, another way you can represent a function is graphically. So you can make a graph maybe of a function, and we'll talk about um, ways to tell if a certain graph is a function or isn't. Um, and then the other way is you can talk about a function in words. So let's take a, let's take a look at this example that gives the daily temperature. So we have a specific range of dates here, and uh, between December 17th and December 26, 2008, and then um, then we have the, um, so one thing I'm noticing about this, I'm, I think there might be a typo here, because what we really want is we want um, we want a specific output for each date, and we know that in a in a day the temperature could fluctuate within that day. But if we had something like the daily low temperature, then that would be a definite number. So for each date, we have a definite um, output. So let's change this this uh, words to say the daily low temperature, um, and then we'll have a definite output uh, for each input. So we input the date and we get out uh, a temperature, a low temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So another way we can think about uh, functions is we could um, we could draw a graph of a function. And so this example says um, the population of Washington, D.C. grew from 1900 to 1950, then stayed approximately constant during the 1950s, and then it um, decreased from 1960 to 2005. Graph the population as a function of years since 1900. So on our independent, um, so let's, let's talk a little bit about the words here. This says graph the population as a function of years since 1900. So what that's telling me when I, when I write it that way is that these things are my inputs and this is my output. So I want the population as a function of years since 1900. So that means I'm going to input the year since 1900 and the output will be the population. So when you're thinking about function, I want you to look for this type of sentence structure, because that's going to tell you what your inputs and your outputs are. It'll tell you your output as a function of the input. So that means that my input is going to be years since 1900. So I'm going to put that here on my independent or my x-axis. Okay, and then on my y-axis, my dependent variable, my output, is the population. Okay, so if we want to talk about, if this is years since 1900, then that would mean at zero years since 1900 that that is in 1900. So there is some population um, of Washington, D.C. I don't know what it is, but some initial population. And then it says from 1900 to 1950, that's 50 years after 1900, the graph, uh, that, that it stayed approximately Wait, it, it, it uh, increased, it grew, and then during the 1950s, it stayed approximately constant in, and so that would be um, 60 years later, so it stays constant, and then to 2005, uh, that's 105 years later, after 1900, um, and it's going to decrease, so we should make the population going down. So we kind of made it look kind of like piecewise linear, but anyway, something like that where it's increasing and then decreasing. Um, so one thing I wanted to note about functions is, is when we're thinking about a graph, 
we can tell if a relation is a function by looking at the graph. So if, for instance, I have a graph that looks like, um, I'm just gonna draw a circle, right? We can say this is not a function because for some input, I have two different outputs. So this is not a function. Some inputs have more than one output. Okay, but the one that I've drawn here with the Washington DC, any input that I pick has exactly one output. So this is a function. Okay, so graphically, um, we can tell if a relation is a function or not by, uh, by looking at any x value and seeing if it has multiple y values. You may have heard this called the vertical line test. Okay. And so function notation, um, for this function, I'm going to call the function name for this population. Let's say the function name. Uh, so the function name, um, we can name it any letter we want to. I'm just going to call it F because that's going to be kind of consistent with my example, my next, next example. But a lot of times we use func F for a function name or G or H, something like that. And we're going to call P is the population of Washington, D.C. And we'll say T is the number of years since 1900. And so for our function notation, we can say P is equal to F of T. So uh, the population is a function of time. That's telling me that time is my input. And then F is the function name. Okay, and so here's our example. This is kind of using the same letters I was. Let P equal F of T, where P is the population of Washington, D.C., and T is the time in years since 1900. So what does F of 50 represent? So this 50 is a value of T because it's inside the parentheses there. So that is a T value. So F of 50 represents the population in the year 1950, or in other words, 50 years after 1900. And what does f of zero represent? Well, that would be the population zero years past 1900. So that would be the population in 1900. And then the question is, which is greater, f of 50 or f of zero? So to answer that question, we'll go back to the original problem that we had previously, where it says that the population grew from 1900 to 1950. So the population is going to be greater in 1950. And we can also see it from the graph. We can see that this, um, on our graph, that in 1950, it's, the population is higher. So we can say F of 50 is greater. Okay. And then graphs of functions often have um, intercepts. So that's where the graph crosses the horizontal or the vertical axis. So if it's a horizontal intercept, they're also called zeros. Okay, so we have maybe some sort of a graph and it can cross the axis um, in multiple places. So this, this, and this are x-intercepts. Or zeros and then um, this here where it crosses the y-axis is that's a y-intercept sometimes we call this an initial value because it's the value of the function when x is zero so um, so sometimes we call that an initial value or a y-intercept and so then a function is 
if the values of f increase as x increases, in other words, as we move this direction, the values that are going up, right? So as x increases, the function values increase, we would say the graph is increasing. And if as x increases, the uh, values of the function decrease, then we would say that it's a decreasing function.